Okay, time for another video about the Nashville Mystery RV bombing. Taking a closer look at some more details that really don't make a whole lot of sense at all. And there have been some new photos released just this past week that I find to be compelling. But before we get into the new material, let's take a quick stop at the Wikipedia to learn more about the 2020 Nashville bombing. And keeping in mind, this event has occurred over six weeks ago, so there has been plenty of time for investigating and reporting. So, on December 25th, 2020, person of interest Anthony Quinn Warner detonated a recreational vehicle bomb in downtown Nashville. Well, that doesn't really describe a whole lot about the nature of this bombing, so let's just scroll down here. Bombing. The explosion was caused by a car bomb carried in a Thor motor coach parked outside. Now this is kind of funny and interesting that Wikipedia provides a highlighted link to Thor motor coach as if getting specific details about the make and model of this RV in question is somehow relevant to understanding the event. But yet car bomb is left unhighlighted, and unlinked. Interesting. Even though Wikipedia does have an entry for car bomb with pictures of aftermath and what car bombs could be made out of, improvised explosive devices, artillery shells, fertilizer, etc. But isn't it kind of funny here that car bomb is left unhighlighted as if somehow that's not the relevant detail to understanding the bombing itself. So let's, let's just go forward a little bit more here. Okay, here we go. Investigation. After the bombing, a bomb squad, along with police and federal investigators, arrived at the site to gather evidence and determine what type of explosive was used in the blast. Authorities swept the area and did not find any additional explosives, but they did find shell casings of unfired ammunition. So, th this is worded kind of funny, and it's not really clear what is actually being investigated. Did they search for residues of explosives, the byproducts of explosives, the the actual device itself, whatever contained the explosives. It doesn't say it found anything, which is kind of odd. It would be this far into the investigation, and literally no information about the nature of this explosive is given. And so none of the news reports have given this. The experts that have shown up, they speculate about TNT, gunpowder, pyrotechnic shows combination of explosives, but it's really not clear, even to this day, what is going on here. So I'm looking at this event from a technical curiosity, and the materials that are used to make this homemade device are very much relevant. And typically the media would be reporting on this, and the public would be very much concerned because Everything is geared to preventing this sort of thing from happening again. If a homemade explosive with obtainable materials can do this level of damage, I mean, obviously this car bomb worked. It destroyed an entire city block, disrupted communications in a widespread area, and it's, it was devastating. And so how do we prevent this sort of thing from happening again? Well, you have to do an investigation, but... What do you do if there's no evidence? How do you report on that? How do you tell the public they're safe? I don't know. So this is what we're this is what we're looking at here. Wikipedia giving absolutely no information. And you've heard all this reporting about this particular person, all these details about his life. You know, should they have investigated him before? Uh, but in terms of understanding the specific nature of the explosives in question, there literally has been no information. So let's start off here at some other examples of car bombings. 
And so here's a crater in the pavement that looks very similar to the one in Nashville. And car bombings can range in size from very small to truckloads of explosives doing devastating damage to adjacent buildings. And you can see the size of this crater in relation to the level of damage to the building it was parked in front of. But small car bombs can be used to target specific individuals on the road or specific people walking nearby or military convoys. And uh, they, they can really range in the amount of blast that can be produced. So this is definitely a high level damage area. And, and look at the size of the crater that is made in the road. You could fit a couple dozen people in there. Here's a different kind of detonation. I'm not really sure what that is. Maybe some type of incendiary. Here's another big blast. Takes out like eight feet of earth underneath. Here's another big one. So you can obviously fit a lot of explosive power inside a vehicle, which is why they are lethal. Here's another small one. There's a big one, <laughs> small one. There's one. That's kind of big. No, I would say that's on the small side. That, that's that's big. That's a, that's a high level damage area right there. And there's a relatively small one. You can see some vehicles parked nearby are damaged. So if you were driving this van, uh, chances are you'd be severely injured or killed. So you can see the amount of damage these things can do to the pavement. And there's one from the 70s caught in the act. You can see the car flying up in the air and all the pavement being blasted outwards. And there's Oklahoma City. I don't know how relevant that is, but you can see the crater here. Um, so it does make a sizable crater in the road, Oklahoma City. So you get the point that it can be a wide variety of blast effects. There's one that's kind of small. That's a big one. But there have been lots and lots of car bombings thanks to all the conflicts in the Middle East. We don't see them too often here in the United States, but... So anyways, that's what a car bomb looks like. So in this photo, the blast crater is right here, but it's hard to see because it's covered up with some debris from the buildings, a lot of fine particulate matter in the road, and it's really not that big of a crater to begin with, but it did some pretty high level damage in the surrounding area. So here's the crater right here in the pavement. And it's just big enough that you can fit two people standing inside and here they are sweeping out the fine debris to get a better look. Here's the crater right here. And this is the area in Google Maps. So the RV was parked where this white truck is. And this is the focus of the blast area right here made a big hole in the building right here. And some pretty high level damage across the street. <laughs> so here's a close up of the blast crater. And it's really kind of strange. You can't really see where the pavement actually ends. It looks like there's a depression and then there's this kind of melted area. You know, it's not clear if this is asphalt that is melted 
but the original surface you can see is still intact here there's a depression from the pressure wave but in terms of comparison with other car, car bombings this is a relatively small crater but the damage to the adjacent buildings I mean look at it look I mean there's just it's just all blown out here you got three buildings in a row just completely devastated here and just this tiny little crater so it, it doesn't really correlate with the level of damage on the outside. Really quite strange. And here's what's left of the RV over here. And this actually looks like it could be the rear differential, which is chewed out right here. Uh, it's really not clear what this is. But this is the frame of the vehicle and it's just completely twisted up and decimated. So look at this crater. This is a good picture right here. It's really not that big of a crater. But what's going on over here, I'm, I'm going to pay particular attention to. And... There's a, there's a metal grate that surrounds this tree. This is what's left of the tree right here. And it's not really clear, but it looks like the metal grate itself has eroded away. I mean, this is cast iron, heavy steel. And, uh, you know, where is it? All right, so this is this is what I want to point out. That's really, it just does not correlate with the above ground explosion at all. So this is a heavy concrete and rebar cover that covers these utility tunnel openings. There's there's metal grates here, and a big concrete pad here. More metal grates and another concrete pad there. But you can see all of these coverings are blasted open or missing. In fact, there's only one here that can be seen. And it's not clear if that was over here or over here. But definitely it was lifted up and shifted over. And you can even see some rebar exposed on the end. We'll get a better picture of it in just a little bit. But, okay, this, this is the blast area right here. This is where the crater is, buried underneath this rubble. All this particulate matter in the street here, and holes in the building, and holes in the covers. What is going on? So you can see the cover more clearly here after some of the surrounding debris has been removed. And so we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine covers that appear to be missing. And here's the cast iron grate part of it that covers the tree. And here's that concrete cover and the steel grates for the smaller openings. So here, here's the question the million dollar question, how can above ground explosive in a vehicle lift up these heavy concrete and rebar coverings and disintegrate all these other steel coverings? I mean, these things are not lightweight. You can see where it goes around the tree here. There's a circular opening. And here's some of those new pictures. Look at this piece of structural steel. I mean, come on. I mean, this this is like 9-11 flashback devastation here. I mean, this is some high-level damage to this building, but the materials in question here, I mean, this, this just doesn't make sense. 
And so looking at this crater in conjunction with all this other damage, you can see the size and thickness of this concrete cover here. Here's another piece of steel eroded and corroded away. You can see part of this rebar exposed right here. What erodes the concrete like that? And so here's where that circular opening for that cast iron grate should be. And it's, it's not easy to tell here. It might be covered up, but it really doesn't look like it's there. We've got this thing here. Like, this is what's left of <laughs> that cast iron grate. I don't know. I mean, this is, this is where that position should be. Um, so we've got some high-level damage to materials like steel and concrete. Look at the erosion inside here. That's, that's not right. But how much do you think this concrete cover weighs with the rebar in it? I mean, if this is like 8 feet long, 6 feet wide, and 8 inches thick, I mean, that's got to weigh more than a car. What could lift that up? And not only that, one of them is missing. This is the only one here. There should be two of these. And at least six of these metal grates. Is this part of the metal grate here? The steel that's all chewed up and eroded? What is going on here, folks? It's not, so not only does this crater not look right, it is consistent with what would be considered a small car bomb but certainly not a type of car bomb that could do the, the level of damage that we're looking at on the outside. It's, it's just unbelievable. So you can see some rebar sticking out here. So here's a question. Why would the rebar be sticking straight out? If something caused this slab of structural concrete to break, why wouldn't the rebar be bent in the direction of the force applied. It, this is why I can't get any work done in the shop here or sleep really well at night because this stuff just bothers me. It's like the concrete disintegrated, leaving the rebar in its original position. Another unusual looking feature of the blast site is the amount of discoloration or charring on the facade of the AT&T building, which is the tallest building on the street. And that includes this area of the brickwork as well as an area above on the metal flashing. And it just looks unusual how there's this variation of light to dark and these concentrated areas. It's not clear if that effect is caused by something burning on the street, something on the building, or some type of effect with the blast fireball but it almost looks like radiation burns in conjunction with dust. But I haven't looked at that many high-level blast sites to really get a good perspective. It just seems like there's a lot of discoloration on the brickwork that appears to be localized in areas. And it goes all the way up the building here and discolors all this flashing above here, so must have been some kind of weird fireball to create that effect just with one blast. You can see all the discoloration here. It's a big difference between this area and this area. And from this perspective you can see it makes this diagonal path and there's all this damage to the roof line of the building, flashing. I don't know, it just looked unusual to me that one blast cloud could produce that type of effect. But I don't know if that's some kind of residue or just something to do with heat or possibly radiation. I don't know. So in this picture, you can see that piece of steel here. What is going on here? This is high level corrosion, erosion of durable materials and uh, it's really not making a whole lot of sense.